humans, I'm Yo Schiller, and welcome back to some more Pokemon Bata! Somehow my Darmanitan is not dying in the rain here. I don't know, you're a fire type. I thought when you're in the rain, it would feel like each of those water droplets would feel like acid hitting your skin. I don't know, I guess rain doesn't actually damage Pokemon in this game. Anyway, folks, today's battle shall be a viewer request. This viewer is known as Whiteblade Zero, and he wanted to have a 6v6 double battle. Now, this is not my first time recording a 6v6 double battle for this series, but it's not a format I do very often. Usually, double battles only require each player to have four Pokemon, because that is the that is the BGC rule set. Hang on a code. We'll do 64, 64, 10, 10. 64, 64, 1, 0, 1, 0. Four. 64 is my favorite number, and 10 is my favorite number, and also I was born on 10, 10, so hopefully that makes more sense. But yes, White Blade Zero wanted to have a 6v6 double battle against me. It's not a format I record very often, so I'm looking forward to seeing how this battle actually plays out today. Yeah, 6v6 is not a format usually done in doubles. Usually you bring six Pokemon to a double battle and then you only select four. Versus when you do a single battle, you might do 6v6 singles. That's a lot more common. And then he said JC was his in-game name. So, all right, White Blade Zero, JC, if you're ready to battle, then I'm ready to battle. So we're going to do normal rules, right? This will allow you to bring six Pokemon. We don't want Battle Tower rules because that would only allow you to bring four. So 6v6, all Pokemon up to level 50. And then my participating team shall be the team that I have in my party today, including that Unova you know and Darmanitan that you saw me carrying around. So here we go. Darmanitan, Milotic, Miltank, Gudra, Weavile, Alcremi. Very good. And then as for the music, I mean, we got to do Legends 2, right? That's a song that was introduced with the second wave of DLC for this game. And it's a banger. It's a banger. It's probably my favorite battle theme in this game. That or Oleana's battle theme. But here we go. All right, 6v6 doubles. Now, this will give me a good excuse to actually try out my mill tank here, this is a utility mill tank, and he's got Venusaur, Charizard, Blastoise, Linoon, Gardevoir, Skarmory. So he's probably just using his favorite, which is fair. That's basically what I do. So mill tank and Weavile got to go out first. The order after that doesn't matter. Weavile has to go out first because having access to fake out is one of the best things you can do on the first turn of a battle. And then mill tank here, as you'll see in a moment. Oh, frick, I just realized I have two Pokemon holding leftovers. Oops, under normal circumstances, having duplicate items is not allowed in competitive play. Hopefully he's okay with this. Sorry, I guess I technically cheated. It's just leftovers. It would be different if it was like Choice Scarf or something. That would be a lot more aggressive and unfair. Hopefully he doesn't mind. I'm sorry. If I win, you can call me a cheater for having leftovers twice. Sorry, I, I messed up. If anything, I'd rather have the Milotic have leftovers and the Alcremie could have had probably something else, but okay. In any case, my mill tank here is a support mill tank, which is not particularly common, but I realized mill tank can learn Thunder Wave. It is a fast Pokemon that can learn Thunder Wave. It's not the fastest Pokemon that can learn Thunder Wave. I think that might go to, at least as far as this game is concerned, it might go to Jolteon, which is another Pokemon that I do tend to run. But I wanted to try out a support mill tank set because it gets an interesting set of moves that I think could make it a decent utility Pokemon. And in a 6v6 doubles battle, I think it's worth trying out. So we're going to use Thunder Wave on the Charizard because I suspect you might Dynamax it. And then Skarmory is probably going to go straight for like Stealth Rocks or something. So I may as well switch. Just in case he Dynamaxes the Charizard, he might attack Weavile directly, break my focus, Ash, and KO. So I'm going to switch. There we go. Weavile, come on back. We'll save out your fake out for another time. We'll go into Gudra. Bulky, bulky Gudra. Dragon Dance! Okay, so it's a setup Charizard. That's fine too. No matter what, I'm still gonna paralyze you, because no way Skarmory's gonna one hit KO this Mill Tank if it's even attacking. I feel like you're going for Stealth Rock. It's a 6v6 battle, so Stealth Rock is particularly useful whether it's singles or doubles. So, there you go. Stealth Rock called it. That's the Skarmory classic. Stealth Rock spikes. I think it also learns Toxic Spikes. Maybe you have an attacking move. Maybe you have Whirlwind. But okay. This Charizard wants to Dragon Dance so badly, I'm gonna go ahead and shut down your attack. The Paralysis will already shut down your speed. Charm will shut down your attack by two stages, so it's like if you wanted to use Dragon Dance again this turn, you'd effectively be back at your base stats for how you actually began this battle. So, that's the plan. The Mill Tank does not have an attacking move, which means I can't have it be the last Pokemon on my team. It does have Helping Hand, which will allow it to assist any of my other attacking Pokemon, including my Gudra here. Oh. What's your plan, man? Flood? That must be the Blastoise. Uh, I should have gone for Thunderbolt just to check for that, but that's okay. So we'll charm the Charizard. There you go. If you're fully paralyzed this turn, you'll actually be worse off from when you started. Dragon Claw! Yeah, this is a this is a classic physical Charizard. That did a lot for you being at minus two attack. But then again, my Gujra does not have a good physical defense stat, just a good special defense stat. Alright. 
Very well. And the Blastoise is bulky. That's leftovers. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna do then. I'm gonna use Thunder Wave with Mill Tank to paralyze the Blastoise. If I can paralyze his entire team, that would be great. And then I'm gonna switch over to All Creamy for two reasons. One, I predict he's gonna use Dragon Claw again with Charizard. All Creamy will be immune to that. He sent Blastoise in as a counter to Gudra, presumably. It's probably gonna use Ice Beam. That'll do neutral damage to All Creamy. Fine. Then, All Creamy allows me to set up basically two turns from now. All Creamy's Decorate will allow me to boost the special attack stat by two stages of any Pokemon I use it on. So I can always switch out Mill Tank for something else. I can probably switch into Darmanitan or e even back into Gudra, potentially. Okay, yeah, so Charizard's going out. That's fine. Glad I chose not to attack it this turn. And then Falcon Zord was the Skarmory. Great. I don't mind seeing that. Oh, that, that could be troublesome for my all creamy. If he's running an attacking move, it's probably gonna be like Steel Wing or something. That's usually what people do, I think. Steel Wing or Brave Bird. Uh, and then, so okay, we'll go ahead and paralyze that. I could use Charm on the Skarmory. I, I guess it doesn't matter that much. All creamy is more physically defensive. We'll, we'll see in a moment. Scald into the Mill Tank. That's not a big deal. Yeah, so yeah, that's more of a bulky Blastoise than an offensive one, which is fine by me. Okay, so. We're gonna do exactly as I said. I, as, as nice as it would be to paralyze the Skarmory, I don't really see it as a huge offensive threat. So, hmm, I'm debating it. Now, we'll switch into, we'll go back into Gudra. We'll go back into Gudra because he's probably gonna use Scald again. Gudra will take it like a champ. And then I'll go ahead and use Decorate on the Gudra. That will allow her to become an offensive threat because Gudra is primarily bulky. She has Acid Spray, just in case I need to try to do stuff. But now we'll go, we'll go for Decorate. Decorate onto Mill Tank, which is about to become Gudra. So now Gudra will be bulky and offensive, and I could try to go for a sweep. We'll just see how the rest of this plays out, because even though I'm boosting Gudra's special attack, I'm not boosting her physical defense, you know? So he could send that Charizard back in here, and I could be in trouble. Ooh, lucky me with the paralysis, although that wasn't the main thing I was worried about. The main thing I was worried about was this. Ah, I did a lot! Oh, it was a crit. Well, that makes more sense. I was gonna say, that did a lot for a Skarmory. I'm thankful all Creamy even survived a crit. All right, well, Gudra's ready to go. Very good, very good, very good. And now I should just be able to use Thunderbolt on either of these Pokemon and take them out. So I'm just gonna go for Thunderbolt, just in case he wants to switch into something else, Thunderbolt. He had that Venusaur, but now we'll just, we'll, if he switches the Venusaur, then I'll just use Flamethrower after that, so we're good. And then just to ensure the death in case All Creamy goes down this turn, we'll go ahead and use Helping Hand just once. There we go. Thank you, All Creamy. Thank you very much, okay. Now we'll go ahead and Thunderbolt it up, and then that should take out the Blastoise, no problem. Boom, baby! All right, finally, we're dealing damage to his team. That's enough setting up, don't you think? So, boom, and then All Creamy's gonna go down right here. Oh, no, he missed! I, I kind of feel bad. I was, I was banking on All Creamy going down right there. Well, I think he has a 50% chance to miss. That, that kind of sucks. I feel bad when that happens. I'm thankful that All Creamy didn't go down this turn, but I, I do genuinely feel bad. All right, well, we're basically just gonna do the same thing then. We're gonna do Helping Hand and then have Gudra attack until All Creamy does go down, because I'm, I'm kind of banking on All Creamy going down at this point. But okay, so here's where we're at. The Blastoise is down, the Charizard's paralyzed. Gardevoir, that's right, you did have one, okay. And then you're tracing Sweet Veil, that doesn't matter, just means I can't put you to sleep. Not part of my strategy anyway. Acid Spray is not a particularly powerful move, but at, at plus two special attack, it could take you down and it'll lower your special defense after the fact. So we'll go for Mystical Fire just in case. Oh, he's faster anyway. Okay, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I should have gone for Helping Hand. Doesn't matter. Okay, so we'll do this. Boom. And then the Skarmory was faster than... Oh, no. I'm, I'm faster than the Skarmory. Okay. That might not KO. Yeah, even with Helping Hand, I mean, that would have done more damage, but I don't think it would have gotten the KO. He'll go down next turn for sure. And then Steel Wing, and then that might take me out. It does. All right. No worries. I mean, yeah, my, my two bulky Pokemon are down. I've still got my Lim tick in the back. And then he does have Stealth Rock up, which kind of messes up Weavile, so we'll save Weavile for a little later. Let's get my Lotic out. We'll place it on the right. The, the, the position doesn't matter for these two specifically. All right, so Darmanitan and my Lotic. Here we go, the heavy hitter and the beauty in motion. Now this my Lotic is a different build from my Lotics I, I've used previously. This my Lotic at one point in time was set up to be a physical attacker, and that's why it has the B in its name. And then speaking of physical attacking, Darmanitan should be the fastest thing on the field. So, uh, U-turn probably won't KO. I should just go for the kill. We'll go ahead and do Iron Head. Just, just go for the kill, and then we'll do Coil. He's not gonna be able to do too much about that. 
Yeah, so this Milotic at one point was meant to be a physical attacker and it was using Breaking Swipe, which is a move that, it's a physical move that hits both Pokemon and it lowers the attack stat of them. So, or it might, maybe it only attacks one, but the, the idea was that it lowered the attack stat of Pokemon. So it made Milotic really obnoxious to fight when I was spamming Coil. But I've kind of reverted this Milotic strategy back to the Milotics I've used previously, which is to use Coil and then spam Icy Wind and Muddy Water. And then Iron Head. Oh, you got that berry. All right, well, this might still kill, because I've got life orbs. There we go. And then Iron Head is boosted by Darmanitan's ability, which makes it so that I can basically double my attack power if a move has a secondary effect. And Iron Head has a secondary effect of potentially causing a flinch. So, Iron Head on Darmanitan. I think it's pretty darn good. All right. Iron Head's not super useful because it's super effective toward ice and fairy. And I mean, Flare Blitz is already super effective toward Ice and Fairy. I mean, Flare Blitz is neutral to it, but it was useful there. I could have also had Rock Slide, but I, I think I put Iron Head on mainly to check for, for Fairy types. Okay, here we go. Flare Blitz you, and then Icy Wind, I guess. I, I imagine you sent in Venusaur to try and check for the Milotic. Venusaur is not particularly fast. I guess you could set up Sun, and if its, if its ability is Chlorophyll, that makes it fast. I guess that actually makes Venusaur really fast because it doubles its speed in the Sun. So we'll go for Icy Wind, and then what's your plan here? You're gonna Dynamax one of them. Yep, is it gonna be the Venusaur? I assume it is. You're gonna gi Gigantamax Venusaur? Probably. It's a, it's a very useful Gigantamax move, and I don't have a good way to deal with that. Yeah, all right. Well, Darmanitan should be faster. Will it one-hit KO a Dynamax or Gigantamax Venusaur? That, I'm not so sure. It might. Darmanitan hits like a truck, and especially since they have Life Orb on it, it might. Let's see. Yeah, baby! One hit KO! Alright, so Venusaur is down. Not super worried about the Charizard. I don't know if it has an answer to either of these Pokemon. I think he's just gonna have to chip away. Oh, did a lot to myself though. Yeah, okay. Icy Wind hits for neutral damage. I mean, if he's attacking Darmanitan this turn, then Darmanitan will go down. No worries. Hit! So Charizard speed dropped. Thunder Punch. Ah! Good, good moveset. Just, I, I'm well prepared for it. Sorry, man, sometimes you just deal with a team that's perfectly me made to counter yours. I didn't even know what you we were going to be using today, but my Lotic was meant to counter those pesky physical attackers. And Gudra was meant to counter the special attackers. All right. Well, what's up next? So this is going to be the Skarmory again. So Skarmory is normally physically defensive. Darmanitan probably won't hit one-hit KO. It, it can't one-hit KO because it's going to have sturdy anyway. So in that case, we'll go ahead and do Muddy Water. And with any luck, Muddy Water might take out the Charizard? My my Lotic has no investments in special attack. It's purely bulky. Let's see. Yeah, so sturdy. I can see that little sliver there, and then I'll take myself out with the recoil damage. No worries, Darmanitan, you did what you needed to do. So good job. You took out the Dynamax Pokemon on his team. And then Muddy Water. So that'll take out the Skarmory. Using Coil will basically ensure that that hits. So Skarmory's down, very good. And then Charizard is not down. I did not lower the accuracy on the Charizard. No worries. And then Thunder Punch, and I should take that like a pro. What? You got a crit. You got a crit, man. But, okay, so a critical hit negates any defense boosts I do, and it'll basically give him the maximum possible damage he can get. Uh, let's go into Mill Tank. I'm realizing I might actually be in trouble here, because if, if my low tick goes down, the only thing that'll deal damage is the Weavile, and he might win this. Although this is this is the last Hulk one, right, Lionoon? And I, and I know what the strategy with this Lionoon is. You're gonna go for Belly Drum. Belly Drum Extreme Speed, it's a classic. It's a classic, so we'll go ahead and paralyze you. And then we'll go ahead and recover with my Lotic because I gotta make it, I gotta make my Lotic as much of a nuisance for you to deal with as possible. That critical hit from that Charizard sucks, but now we verified that even at max power, it won't one hit KO my Lotic. Critical hits negate any defense boosts I have and it doubles the damage he would normally do if I had no defense boosts. So yep, Belly Drum, classic, classic. I commend you for using a hoe in Linoon as well. Not common these days, ever since they added Galarian Linoon with an evolution. Yep, and then you got the berry. Not even worried. Because what I could do on a future turn, if it comes down to it, is I can always uh, try to take care of you with Weavile. I just gotta make sure Miltank is the last one standing. That's that's the worrisome part about it. So we're gonna do Recover with my low tick, And then Charizard's probably gonna go for Thunder Punch again, so I'm not I'm not super concerned. Let's see what you got. Flare Blitz into Miltank? It has to be. Which is fine with me if Miltank goes down right now. Because the important thing was that, oh, he's gonna take himself out. Yeah, because Miltank's holding Rocky Helmet. 
Yeah, I probably, what I should have done instead of having leftovers on two Pokemon, oops. I should have had Rocky Helmet on the Milotic. Leftovers probably on all creamy. And then Miltank just gets like something, something else. I don't know, like a berry or something. All right, well, either way, we'll charm you, which basically negates your Belly Drum. I mean, Belly Drum puts you at plus six attack. So now you're at plus four. You didn't go for extreme speed though. Usually Linoon uses extreme speed after it uses Belly Drum. I assume it can still use that move in this game. I'm pretty sure. Fully, oh, that's a bummer. That might've just cost you the match. Well, actually, if that were the case, let's say he was still at plus four attack and he went he went to attack Miltank. Well, then I would have faked him out the next turn with Weavile after I sent that in. So I don't know, that's just a bummer. We'll do Coil, just in case. Just in case, like just future-proofing myself. So we do Charm again. You're still not using extreme speed. Okay, so now that I've done Charm twice, you're basically at plus two attack and my low tick is now at plus two defense. So if you're going for the my low tick, it's basically gonna count as a neutral hit. So let's see. Paralyzed again, oh boy. Well, at this point, if I stall anymore with Coil, it kind of gets into the bullying territory. So maybe I should just put you out of your misery. So we'll do things this way. We'll helping hand my low tick and we'll, no, not Coil, we'll muddy water at you. And that should take you out. Maybe, I mean, again, my Milotic has no investments in offense, but Lion is not really known for being defensive either. So Helping Hand Muddy Water should finish the job. Let's see. But the first Muddy Water did about half. Yeah, that'll do it. All right. Well, the support Miltank set is a very weird set with a lot of flaws, but it did work out there. JC or White Blade Zero, thank you very much for the battle. And I, next time, will remember to not bring a Pokemon with two of the same item. That's a big no-no. That's a big no-no. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll receive the League Battle card. Hopefully that was okay. Thank you very much for playing. And folks, those of you that are watching this video, if you would like to battle me, there is a form in the description of this video that you can fill out and submit whatever battle request you want. But for now, that's gonna wrap up this episode of Pokemon Bata, and I'd like to thank you all for watching. Darmanitan, thank you again for battling. I'm hoping that the rain isn't burning your skin. All right, folks, I hope to see you all in future videos. I'm just stalling at this point. Oh, wait, there's something I gotta do. I gotta spin around while I do my outro. Yes, I've been forgetting to do this. All right, I hope to see you on future videos. Bye-bye, humans. Oh, I was supposed to whoosh when I did that. What, I, I blew it, whatever. Bye-bye, humans, whoosh. Hey, thank you for watching my video. If you want to continue to support my content, the best thing you can do is like this video and subscribe to my channel. All you have to do is click the little buttons down below. Also, please be sure to follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with my video schedule. My tag is at RealYoShiller. I hope to see you all in future videos. Bye-bye. Whoosh.